This is my favorite tip, and it's especially important right now at this time of year of the Milky Way season. Hey everybody, welcome in. I'm Aaron King with Photog Adventures and I am gonna share with you my favorite, favorite tip. And this is the tip that if you know me, you've come out with me or you come to Milky Way Wednesday, you've heard me say this a hundred times because I love it. Once I realized what was happening, it was obvious. It's like, why, why didn't I notice this? Why didn't I recognize that this would be the case, that there would be a guide star, a guide star that would show the Milky Way core? Well, right now in this, this time of year, it's hypercritical to understand where the core is going to be. Well, if you're like me and you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you're waiting for the Milky Way to rise. You're looking at that horizon and you're going, hey, buddy, you know what? We're going to be right here for the Milky Way. Um, we got to wait for it to rise. It's somewhere over in this direction. That's what we say. It's somewhere over there. We're pointing to the vague east and saying, the Milky Way core is going to come up around 3 a.m. Well, I guess right now it's like 4 a.m. And it'll be here. Oh, wait, what time is it coming up? It's going to be here sometime around 2 a.m. It's going to be up here. And I'm telling my friend that that Milky Way is going to be over there. It's going to be a brilliant core. It's going to be visible. Well, if he goes, well, where exactly should I point? Or what if in the scenario I've got rocks and I've got these really cool rocks. Some stand tall. Some stand short. Some are over here. And you're thinking, okay. I love these two rocks in particular, and I wish the core would come right between them, and I want to position myself right now to be in the spot, so I go, hmm, let me grab my phone, and I'm going to turn on the augmented reality part of photo pills or planet or whatever you like to use on site, and I look through it and go, okay, the core is going to be somewhere right here, and you'll have that moment where what you're looking at in the augmented reality will shift on you. You're like, oh, oh, my orientation got off. Oh, let me do a figure eight. And you start doing a figure eight to make sure that the gyroscope in your phone is kind of repositioned in the right spot. And now, okay, the Milky Way is kind of shifting a little bit, but it's roughly, it's roughly, man, it's roughly in that area right there. So you have this lack of confidence on exactly where the Milky Way is. And when you look at the augmented reality app, you've also got... Not 100% confidence. You got a little bit of an idea, pretty dang good idea, but you're not 100% confident. Well, how can you be 100% confident that you can know, hey, I don't see the core right now, but in one hour, it's going to be right there. And if I put my camera over here between these two twigs and this rock and that statue, I can have the Milky Way core right in between them in one hour. You could do that. You really can do that. And when I found this guide star that is exactly what I needed, <gasps> everything opened up for me. So first, let's introduce you to that guide star. That is Antares. Antares is part of the Rho-Ophiuchi complex and the Scorpius constellation. So the Scorpius constellation looks like this, and you can see how it's a nice little scorpion tail and the top of the head. I like to call this part up here the kite. Let me pause this. You can see that there's this, oh, a rake. I always say rake, not kite. Antares orange goes up, and there's like these four stars that you'll see, really only three that'll be prominent. So those three stars come off of that Antares star like a rake, you know, a nice triangle with tines. Uh, is rake a tine like a fork? The rake spokes on a rake, are they rakes or are they tines, like a fork tine? Anyway, that three star grouping is what you're going to be looking for. Imagine if I zoom out and show you it at this perspective. You can see in clarity there's a yellow star and a bright, bright, bright. If I turn on a little bit of light pollution, let me get the atmosphere turned on. There we go. <laughs> That's what I need to turn on too. Now you can see more of what you can expect with your naked eye. Now the moon is up in this example. So the moon is brightening the sky a little bit, but it's helpful just to show and mitigate some of the visibility. So you can see what I'm talking about with the rake. Antares, a crab, Deshkuba, however you say that. These stars will stand out to you, and you'll look for that rake. You'll look for that position in the sky and go, ah, ah, okay. Orange star plus three big stars, and there's a good gap of them. That's Antares. That's the row of Fuki. That's when I know right here the Milky Way core is going to be in one hour. Let me go ahead and take off 
the realistic magnitude. Let's turn off the atmosphere so that we have really good clarity on what our night sky looks like. Let's get rid of this clock. Well, I want to have it on there, but let's look at this. I'm going to go ahead and put a circle on the screen roughly around Antares because you got to understand the core is going to take that position. It's not one to one and it's not precisely one hour. So let's watch this together. I'm going to put a circle on the screen right now. And that circle is roughly over the Roa Fuki complex, that area right there. If I zoom in, you can see the glorious, glorious color and dust lane and nebulosity that's happening in the Roa Fuki complex all around Antares. Red stars, blue and white, yellow, orange. Ooh, it's awesome. If you've ever had a deep sky shot capture of this spot, you know that you have art that you can put on your wall. It is gorgeous. It's one of my favorite spots in the entire night sky. And it's right here, and it acts as a guide star for where the Milky Way is going to be. It just sits in front of it, whoop, and it moves in the same position and height that a Milky Way core does. So let me put the circle right there over Antares, and I'm going to hit play. And we're going to watch this go backwards. All right, roughly 2, 2 a.m. with some seconds. I'm going to give myself some room to work with, put this in the dead center. We're looking a little southeast at Antares, and now I'm going to hit play and let time go forward, hopefully this time, and have the core move into position. Let's put my circle back in the right position real quick. All right, there we go. And as you're standing there with your friends and you know that Antares was in a good spot an hour ago, you put yourself and your tripod in position for when that core comes into position. We've already gone through in half an hour of time and the core is obviously getting right up there and closer. And so we're going to watch as the galactic core, the most juicy part of the center with the most bright stars and the most crazy dust lanes that counteract that highlight of the stars. And it just gives it all that kind of cool character that we love and we capture with just great, you know, and we're not bigger and zealous. That's what I wanted to say. So check it out. Now it's 311. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to go back. Oh, I just moved my screen. No. I'm going to go back to that edit before I went, and I moved my screen. You're going to see that as soon as it hit 3 o'clock, that circle was nicely over the core. And you got to understand, it's this general area that we're capturing anyway. We're not zooming in with a nice 200 millimeter right on the core. It can look amazing if you do, but I'm not saying we're doing that. We're just trying to line up the Milky Way core with something interesting. We're out there for Milky Way photography, and here's our chance. Oh, man, that's a cool cacti. I want to be next to that. Ooh, and Terry's. I see it. Okay, there's Antares on the horizon. In one hour, the Milky Way core is going to be there. So I'm going to take a picture over here first. And then in a half an hour, I'm going to move over to this cacti. And I know that I'll have like 30 minutes to spare before the core is in position. Or if I wanted to really like line up this interesting crabbly bush and put the Antares star in the center, knowing that the core will be there. Or what if it's a big open space and there's a rock that curls and another rock that can bookend or create a window for the core. Then I'm going to work my spacing. I'll go, okay, Antares is nice and small in this shot. I've got lots of room for the core. Or, or I see Antares tiny, like uh, Antares is taking up so much space in this hole. I need to go somewhere else because I won't see much of the core once it gets there. You know, the core is much bigger than the Roa Fuki complex area. So you need to take into account that I need some space here. So I want to get some good field goal pulse size stuff that's going to allow the core to get into position. And you can plan your shot off of this star. It's my absolute favorite tip. I love it. And in this time of year, it's so important because you don't see the core. Usually you can see the core and you start planning your shot around where the core currently is. But you could also use this tip later in the season and go, Ah, oh, man, the core is going to be vertical in an hour, and I can see where Antares is right now. So when it's vertical, that's where it's going to be, and I'm going to try and place myself off of this maybe water going off of the sand into the ocean and use it as a leading line going up to the core. That's the thing that you can plan. See where Antares is and go, hmm, all right. I have an hour before it's in great position, or vice versa. Use it the other way. Oh my gosh, I only got one hour left before Milky Way cores me way over there. It's gonna be out of position, so I gotta hurry. I gotta focus. I gotta stop worrying about what I was worrying about with this gear. Give up on that gear. Go with this. Whatever you have to do, use Antares as your guide star. That row of Fuki complex right there, boom, that's glory. That is gonna help you know exactly where the core is, where you need to move your position on your tripod, your composition, anything that you need to adjust knowing that that's where the core is going to be in one hour roughly. So I need to look for that. All right.
Thanks for hanging out with me on another video. I'm Aaron King with Photog Adventures. Come back. I'll be talking about the 10 things that you must do before you go out for Milky Way. I'll see you later.